Hello and welcome to my talk for the day. As you can see, I'm back in the office again. This morning, my dad called me from the nursing home where my mother is living. I was surprised because we'd spoken last night about him taking his tablet with him today so that she and I could see each other. It turned out the reason he'd not taken it with him was something I said to him when we were talking yesterday. When he told me about his plan, I said, you'll need to find out what the password is at the villa in order to get online. Even though he has a password at home, it was clearly news to him that such a thing was necessary. In spite of me trying to reassure him that there was bound to be a staff member there who could help, he ditched the idea. My mother, who remembered what had been promised, was disappointed, and so was I. The incident has sparked off a train of thought in my mind. My dad was confused by my telling him that he needed a password. He can use a tablet, but that doesn't mean to say he knows how it works. The result was that when I used what to him was a highly technical term, password, it didn't communicate. He became discouraged and gave up on the project. It's very easy for those of us who follow Jesus to use technical language when we're trying to communicate our faith. And then for others without background that to become lost and give up. This is particularly the case for someone like me because I've been trained to do what I do. A person with little knowledge of the faith might ask me a question which requires what at first glance I think is a technical theological answer but it makes no sense to them. My problem is that I want to give the best and most precise answer possible, which may not connect, whereas an answer that is less precise, but more accessible, might be the best and allow them to continue their exploration. One of the things we do is to become so comfortable with our understanding of our faith that we think there is only one way to communicate the ideas. The truth is there may be many ways to help someone think through what the Christian faith is all about. The important thing is to connect to something they know. In the history of the church, there have been many attempts to explain what happens at the cross. How does Jesus' death reconcile us to God? These ideas are known as theories of atonement. One of them is satisfaction theory and was developed by St Anselm, a former Archbishop of Canterbury, in the Middle Ages. It's based on a code of chivalry that was very uh, popular at the time. But in today's context, it has many weaknesses. Anselm was using the ideas of his day to communicate an, ex an, an essential aspect of the faith and we can learn from him as the church continues to move away from the consciousness of many people an important thing for us to do is to think about effective communication which allows a conversation to continue rather than technical precision which may bring things to a shuddering halt Once again, thank you for being here today and for listening. Tomorrow, and I'm giving you advanced warning, at six o'clock we'll have the litany, which we've now moved to a weekly event, at least for the summer. So, God bless and stay safe.